Alison, thank you for coming here today to talk to me. I'm Luke Cascarini. Mm -hmm. This is Gary Warburton. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to tell us about the symptoms you have? Um, I've been having trouble for a few years and um, mainly um, the dentist noticed it um, more than I did and um, can't go to the dentist obviously. I can't yeah. open my mouth very wide at all. Um, it got worse and um, so uncomfortable and then yeah. I started getting pain um, in my jaw and my head and I just um, thought you know something has to be done really. Yeah. Can you show us how wide you can open your mouth? That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is that painful? It hurts, yeah, and it sort of you know sends a bit of a pain up my head. Mm -hmm. And um, I just find it very difficult eating, yeah. and you have to tip food in on off a spoon, um, and just basically speaking as well. People say I mumble all the time, you know, yeah. and I find that quite difficult, um, and uh, just basically very uncomfortable. And when? Did you become aware that the problem might be related to your jaw joint? Really, when I went to, well, the dentist said, obviously, it's, you know, you right. can't have your mouth, it's probably your jaw. Yeah. I was a bit worried, thought, you know, I need to go and see somebody. So I went to see Mr. Hugh Davies, who referred me on to you and said, yeah. you know, no option, really. Mm. And you mentioned a couple of years, yeah. two years this has been going mm -hmm. on? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's sort of, I hadn't really noticed it before, but I think it's probably mm. been there, you know, more. Yes. Um, I mean, because at one point they gave me a, when I went to the dentist, they used to put a thing in to hold my mouth open, um, and then I can't get that in anymore. Mm. You know, so basically, I haven't been to the dentist for two years. So. And what are you <laughs> hoping that this surgery can do for you? Well, I hope I'll be able to um, eat properly and enjoy my food again, okay. um, and um, not have the pain is the main thing, okay. um, and go to the dentist, which I never thought I'd say. Because I hate the dentist. But Tell us a little bit about the pain. Is the pain there all the time? Um, basically, yeah. It's like a sort of um, a toothache, you know, or sort of down under here. So you're never pain free? No. And what's the least amount of pain on a zero um, to ten probably scale? Probably sort of four to five, something like that. And then sometimes it goes up to about eight, nine if it's really bad. And what makes it worse? I think usually when I've been concentrating a lot, because I do mm -hmm. grit my teeth, which probably doesn't help. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it's, um, you know, you sort of like this and, and that is really bad, you know. Mm, okay. And then you just want to sort of, you know, just like this all the time. Okay. Could we have a look at your hands, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So you've got some signs of a type of yeah. wear and tear, sort of yes. arthritis of yeah. your Yeah, and then my knees are quite bad as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're, then they are very painful as well. Yeah. Because yeah, so. the same condition is affecting your jaw joint. Mm -hmm. and it has a similar effect, it restricts the movement and causes mm -hmm. pain and swelling. So what we're proposing is mm -hmm. to remove the joint and replace it mm -hmm. with a custom made joint, mm -hmm. which is made of a combination of <coughs> um, titanium and um, high density plastic essentially. Yeah. And that will be put where your damaged joint is with small incisions in, in front of your ear and in your upper neck. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an example of what we'll be using. This isn't your model, but this is the identical God. custom prosthetic joint. <laughs> and it's screwed to your jaw here and here. And we mm -hmm. do it through two incisions. The first incision is in front of your ear here, which you'll virtually it'll disappear. Yeah. And the second incision is down on your neck, mm -hmm. about this long, just down behind the angle of your jaw. Okay. And we use those two incisions to get this Mm -hmm. into place. And you just sort of slide them in or whatever? They're, they're slid and then mm. we screw them into place. Brilliant. Yeah. Looks amazing. <laughs> will I be able to go through the airport? You will. <laughs> yes. People sometimes worry, you know, like about the airport or does it feel different? Mm -hmm. But most people who've got these joints mm -hmm. don't, once it's all healed up, mm -hmm. you know, after a few months, maybe up to a year, yeah. people don't really notice that no. they're any different from yeah. just and will it change my face at all? Or? Not significantly. No. No. You'll feel it if you put your thin. Mm. If you feel over the jaw, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll probably feel the, the metal component, yeah. but you're not going to notice it in yeah. appearance. But you won't feel it from inside or anything? No. No. And no okay. one will be able to look at you and see no. any difference. Okay. And when you're opening your mouth, what you'll notice mm -hmm. is your jaw will deviate mm -hmm. rather than opening straight, and that's yeah. entirely normal. Yeah. Because, because this artificial joint yeah 
doesn't slide like the natural right. joint. So you have one side that's sliding normally yeah. and the other side is hinging okay. and that results in a deviation uh, when you open it. And that's yeah. entirely Mine normal. deviates anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to give you some perspective, in the US there are 1.5 million knee prostheses done per mm -hmm. year. Yeah. TMJ prosthesis is about 1,000. Wow. So there's a huge difference. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but it's the same material, it's mm -hmm. the same quality. It's all. Mm. And is that quite heavy? That, not really. I mean, well, the, the most bad, of the weight is this. Quite thick, isn't it? Most of the mm. weight is a plastic. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess we can talk a little bit about the post op. So initially yeah. on the recovery, mm -hmm. you're going to be on a liquid diet for the right. first few weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you'll progress to a, a soft, mushy, mm -hmm. non-chew type diet. Okay. That's typically for about four to six weeks okay. before you can advance to more of a normal diet. My God, I want my steak. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have you start doing some stretching, some physiotherapy mm -hmm. on your own mm -hmm. at home, probably four times a day. Yeah. Is that and straight away? That's going to be starting in a few weeks after the oh, okay. initial pain subsides. Okay. And then you'll just begin stretching and mm -hmm. that'll gradually increase your mouth opening mm -hmm. uh, to a more normal range. Right. You'll probably have uh, certainly one night in hospital, mm -hmm. and if you do well, you'll go home tomorrow. Okay. Um, some people require two nights. Mm -hmm. That's we'll okay. just see how you Prepared do. Prepared for that. Typically, we uh, will sometimes use a, a drain mm -hmm. that comes out, and if we do, mm -hmm. that will be removed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, we don't always use that. From a patient perspective, is there any anything that you want to know? Any questions that you would ask? Um, yeah, just a bit worried about the anaesthetic because obviously you can't put a tube down my throat. Um, so I just wonder what you do there. Yeah, the anaesthetist will talk in detail about that. Mm -hmm. We'll typically put the tube through your nose mm -hmm. using what's called a very fine fiber optic endoscope technique mm -hmm. to look down into the airway rather than open your mouth and looking through your mouth because okay. we can't do that. Yeah. But the anaesthetist will explain that in much more detail. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just one thing that was worrying me. Mm. Um, and how long will it be until I feel absolutely um, confident with it? Probably within a few months mm -hmm. when the usually, swelling's gone down. And yeah, the, yeah usually pain. six to eight weeks to get over the surgical recovery, yeah. but okay. actually the tissues remodel and heal for mm -hmm. six to 12 months. Okay. So you'll notice some little incremental improvements up to 12 months. Okay, that's fine. The majority of the healing is within the first two to yeah. three. Well, I think I'm just, you know, for people, it's um, important if you, you know, feel anything sort of odd or whatever. Yeah. Or you are having pain, because I see, or it's just because I grip my teeth or something. Yeah. Um, you know, that you should sort of go and see the doctor or the dentist, really. And I was just lucky that mine picked up on it so, so well. I mean, I always have my six monthly checkups. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I mean, luckily I have the same dentist and I mean, it was the headaches really that got me, you know, I, mean, I just, I think once I nearly blacked out, you know, I mean, it's hard to get your dentist to understand that actually, mm -hmm. you know, you just can't open your mouth. Um, but he yep. was very um, And that's actually the primary indication mm. for the surgery, yeah. is to improve the function. Mm -hmm. The pain, yeah. hopefully, will also yeah, improve yeah. to a manageable yeah. level. And yeah, we'll yeah. manage the pain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and hopefully it'll be yeah. a good result on both aspects, mm -hmm. function and pain. Mm -hmm. And it's fine. I mean, you know, you can go on eating off a teaspoon, but it's you know, it's not much it's fun, not is, nice, it? is it? You no, know, it's embarrassing when you go out and things. <laughs> so it's nice to have it, you know, done. So um, how long will the jaw last? Will I have to have it replaced again, or it's possible. Possible. Um, with knee and hip prostheses, mm -hmm. the life expectancy is 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. This particular device has been on the market and in clinical use mm -hmm. uh, for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen that pattern of failure okay. due to wear and tear. Yeah. It may be that we just haven't followed patients long enough. Mm -hmm. It may occur at 40 years. Yeah. Uh, but the device may well last your lifetime. Good the two air. most common reasons for reoperation mm -hmm. are number one, infection. That's less than 2% chance. Yeah. If that happens, then it means probably two more surgeries okay. to clear the infection and put mm -hmm. a new joint in. Okay. 
the second most common complication, which is less than 1%, mm -hmm. it's actually 0.8%, mm -hmm. uh, is extra bone formation. It's called okay. heterotopic bone. Right. And that's just a bony overgrowth around. Okay. Um, and they're the two most common complications that require reoperation. Okay. And what about the other side? I mean, is that, do you think that would get the same problem or? Well, about 60% of people mm -hmm. might um, have joint replacement surgery mm -hmm. on the other side at some time in their life, but okay. it's not it's not something that would necessitate considering surgery unless you have those symptoms and problems. So okay. some people find that the other side actually gets better when the worst side is improved, mm -hmm. and some don't. So yeah. we just treat the side that's causing the problems and mm -hmm. wait and see. Good. Had anything to that? Or? No, I think that's correct. It's um, it's uncommon, mm -hmm. but it can happen. Yeah, okay. it's probably less than twenty percent chance mm -hmm. of the other side becoming symptomatic and requiring a joint replacement. Okay, that's good news then. <laughs>